illallah.
sure we are social distance um, <clears throat> so if you can stay you know six feet apart if possible we try to do it outside but uh wet out there and we can we didn't finish cutting the grass before it started raining <clears throat> Allah Akbar. 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 Allah
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شو من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مديله ومن يدلل فلا هدي له وأشهد أن وأشهد ألا إله إلا الله وداه لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Surely to Allah belongs the praise. It is His, so we praise Him. We seek His help and His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whosoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the one having no partners. And I openly bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his servant and messenger. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina aminu taqullaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tamun tuna ila wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, regard your duty to Allah in truth as it should be regarded and do not die except that you are Muslim. 
This is a command. To me, a threat. Do not die, except you are Muslims. So we thank Allah for another day, another opportunity, another breath to show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us Muslims. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal, and we pray that others are guided to this mercy and this blessing. Today is the 10th day of Dhul Hijjah, or the month of Hajj. This day is called Eid al-Adha, the festival of sacrifice, or Eid Kabir, meaning the greater Eid, or the grand Eid. It's bigger than Eid, Eid, Eid Fitr. I know we, uh, after fasting for a month, we feel like the other Eid is larger, but this is the larger Eid. On this day, today I want to tell you all a story. A story that we all are familiar with, being Muslim. But Allah repeats stories over and over, in the, over and over again in the Quran for emphasis. And because through our lifetime, those stories mean something different each time we read them. I read them when I was 15 years old. It doesn't mean the same to me now when I'm 45 or about to be 45 with children. It makes a huge difference. So at first I want to introduce the stars, the characters in this story. The first one is Hajar, or Hajar. She is in tradition seen as an Egyptian princess, or some traditions hold her as an Egyptian bondsmaid. At any rate, this Egyptian woman, who became the second wife of Khalilullah, the friend of Allah, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, a woman so devoted to Allah, who had such belief in Ibrahim, her husband, that Ibrahim said to her, you and our newborn son, Ismail, meaning God hears, I'm going to take you all to the desert in Arabia and leave both of you there. And she accepted this. How much trust she must have had in her husband to do this. <clears throat> to do this herself with her small child, a small baby. How much iman must she have to believe that everything was going to be okay. And it was. Until the, the water ran out. And the babe starts crying. And the blazing sun starts burning down on her and her child. I'm sure she, she tried to remain calm. But the cries of a baby, the cries of your child, is different from anything else. Something that we can't imagine when you hear your child cry. I remember my firstborn son, whose name happens to be Ishmael, I later changed it to Ismail. And for no rhyme or reason, he would stop breathing. And it drove my wife and I crazy. We was in a panic. So we ran to our house, ran to the hospital. And this weak old child, they were trying to find a way to put an IV in his, in his hand. But they couldn't find a vein to put the IV in. Nurse after nurse came into our room trying to find this IV, I mean trying to find this vein, stabbing my son in the hand repeatedly, and he is screaming. It's like gut-wrenching cries. But after that hospital visit, you know, initially as a baby, he had baby cries, you know, but after that hospital visit, he always had that gut-wrenching cry. It was like he was pouring out his heart for relief. And I was hopeless, me and my wife was hopeless to help him. Ultimately, a paramedic came in and found his vein as if it was nothing. Right, and he was relieved of this pain, relieved of this crime. Well, Hagar, or Hedra, is in the desert with a baby suffocating from the heat of the desert. 
she begins to panic and run back and forth between Mount Safa and Mawa. And then relief comes, so much so that it is overwhelming to her. She says, Zam Zam, or enough, enough. But this Egyptian woman still kept trust in Ibrahim and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next character in this story is Ismail. I'm sure his mother told him that story over and over again. I know my mom would. You know your daddy left us in the desert, right? <laughs> right? But ultimately, Allah and the angel saved us. And of course, Ismail heard the legend of his father, Ibrahim. He has had to have seen his father coming back from Dawa. And he probably was in his father's presence when Ibrahim received revelation. Ismail alayhi salam, as a prophet himself, may have been present and had a revelation simultaneously with his father. So this young man was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a messenger, as a prophet, to convey this message of Al-Islam. So he was no ordinary person. He was an exceptional person. Allah chose him because he was exceptional. And the next character in this story is Shaitan, our avowed enemy, open enemy, attacking us from every angle, from every direction. In this story, Shaitan is definitely busy at all times. He is attacking us from left and from right, but his failure is inevitable. Imagine his frustration dealing with Ibrahim and Ibrahim's family. We know how much hell a one knowledgeable believer is on Shaitan. Imagine the family of Ibrahim, prophets, men and women of God devoted to God, how much stress that had on Shaitan. And I mean Ibrahim tormented Shaitan from the very beginning. Ibrahim figured out Ibrahim alayhi salam figured out the oneness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He destroyed idols and he had the audacity to confront his own people, his friends and family who believed differently, who believed in multiple gods. He confronted them with the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as soon as he opened his mouth, he was Shaitan's worst nightmare. Shaitan encouraged his father to threaten to kill him. Remember, his, his father said, if you don't get out of my face with this oneness of Allah, I'm going to stone you to death. Shaitan convinced the people to try to burn him alive. Yet ultimately, Ibrahim alayhi salam remained triumphant. A man that has endured so much and accomplished so much in his life, as much as Ibrahim puts his faith his trust, his conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without question. So this is where the story starts. The protagonist, Ibrahim, old in age, and his wife Sarah, barren. And he takes a second wife. And he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child. Now we all ask, when we are having children, that our child is healthy, he has all ten fingers, all ten toes. But Ibrahim said, ask, for, ask something different. He says, Rabba heb li mina salihin. My Lord, bless me with righteous offspring. He didn't ask for ten, fing ten, ten fingers and ten toes. He asked that his children are righteous. And Allah says, and it says in the Quran, Fabashar. So we gave him good news of a forbearing son. Think of this. Ibrahim must have been elated. His prayers were answered in his old age. He was given a righteous son, the righteous son that he had yearned for, that he had asked Allah for, that he had thought about, that he had contemplated and tried to have this son, and ultimately Allah grants him this child. And then, and then he has a dream 
that he has to kill this firstborn child. Whom he has gotten from his second wife, whom he has striven, strove, strove for, who he has left in the desert. And this child must be a sacrifice and he must do the sacrifice. Kill his own child. He saw this dream according to the tradition three consecutive nights. But through all this, all he had seen and experienced, he still remained faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He and Ismail headed to the place of the sacrifice. Now the tradition says that his wife Hagar, or Hajra, asked Ibrahim, where are you taking Ismail? He said, to meet a friend. The Quran says, Balama Balaga Maahu Saa Kala Yab Nubaya Inna Arafil Manami Ana Af Bahuka Fantur Matatara. Then when the boy reached the age to work with him, Ibrahim said, Oh dear son, I have seen in a dream that I am to sacrifice you. So tell me what do you think? Think about this story. Think about that a mighty messenger of Allah receives a message to kill his son, and he asks his son, what's your view on this? What do you think we should do? Obviously, he holds his son in high regard to ask him what he thinks. And anyone else, what do you expect Ismail to say? Us regular people, you know. If my dad came and told me he had to sacrifice me, I'd be like, no, no, dude. <laughs> we got to do something else. We got to do something else. But these people are exceptional people receiving revelation from Allah. They have seen his signs. Ismail is in the Quran not only a prophet. He is a Nabi and a Rasul according to the Quran. So he has received revelation as well. So he understands. But to this day, it still blows me away when I read this. I still am in awe. Ismail and his answer, his mentality, his iman, his courage. He says, Kola ya abati al matu rau maru sataji duni in she allahu minal sabirin. Ismail replies, Oh, my dear father, do as you are commanded. Allah willing, you will find me steadfast. You will find me in patient perseverance. Sabirin, al sabirin. Think about the courage that he must have possessed. Do we have that courage? You know, I say all the time how tough I am, but I don't know if I could be in this position if I would be as tough as this young man. I name myself after him because I aspire to be that tough, to be that brave to be that courageous, to have that much Iman. Well, my father named me after him, but I named my son after him for that reason. But at any rate, let us stop now and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabihi wa man wala ajma'in. The praise belongs to Allah. Alhamdulillah means it is His, it's His possession. So the praise belongs to Him. Lord of the worlds of all systems of knowledge. May Allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader, Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, upon his family, upon his companions, and his followers, all of us. Now, shaitan has to be totally incensed at this morning. 
The young son is willing and ready for this sacrifice. See, Shaitan knows the implications of this demonstration. He knows, he perhaps knows the future of the commemoration of this event if it is successfully executed or followed through. So what does this Mr. Attack us from all directions Shaitan do? He immediately goes to Hajjah and asks her, do you know where Ibrahim has taken your son? First thing he does is go to attack the family, the family unit. She replies to meet a friend. Shaitan returns the reply to her and says, by meeting a friend, he meant to meet Allah. He's going to slaughter your son. His mother says, how can a father sacrifice a son? This is according to tradition. And the tradition says, by mistake. We know this is not by mistake. Shaitan utters, it is Allah's command. And this is the same lady who helped pray with her husband for a child who was out in the desert. And she's seen the angel come and rescue them. So when she hears it's by Allah's command, she replies, if this is Allah's command, then even 100 Ismail's can be sacrificed in this way. Tell me these people aren't examples for us to follow. Do you see the level of devotion that these men and women of God Exemplify, personify the degree of iman that we all strive for. Now you know shaitan is really going crazy. He appeals to the mother's love and that doesn't work. So what does he do now? Ibrahim and Ismail are on a mission and a path to this sacrifice and shaitan intercepts them. Trying to stop this at any rate, at any cause. Shaitan appears to them at the stone heap, the Jamarat, and Jabril says to him, pelt him, stone him. So Ibrahim throws seven stones at Shaitan, and Shaitan runs away. And then Shaitan again reappears at the middle stone, and Jabril again says to him, pelt him. So Ibrahim salam, throws seven stones at him. And Shaitan leaves, runs away, flees. And then he re returns a third time to the little stone heap. And, Ibra and Jabril says the same thing. Ibrahim does the same thing. He pelts him with rocks and ultimately he leaves. And the Quran says, Falama aslama wa ta'lahu lil jadin. Then when they submitted, they submitted to the will of Allah. And Ibrahim laid him on the side of his forehead for the sacrifice. The tradition reads that Ismail alayhi salam says, Give my shirt to my mother so you, she can have a source of comfort. And use your own shirt to wrap me up. This is what the son is saying to the father. Just imagine this scene. And it says the skies and the earth are witnessing, witnessing this. Ibrahim tying down his son and laying him down. Ismail says, put me down and turn my face away so you won't hesitate in carrying out this sacrifice. Ibrahim puts his knee on his son's neck so as he won't move. And then he faces the sky and calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, O oh Allah, if you did not like the presence of love for Ibrahim, for Ismail in my heart, I seek your forgiveness. You see, he loved his son dearly. He prayed for his son. Like Noah, alayhi salam, loved and prayed for his son. Then Ibrahim proclaims Allah's name and places the knife on Ismail's neck. He then rubs the knife across his neck but it doesn't cut. Like the fire that didn't burn. Allah has taken away the quality of cutting away from this knife. And then the Quran says, وَلَا ذَيْنَهُ أَنْ يَا إِبْرَهِيمُ 
we called out to him, O Ibrahim, you have already fulfilled the vision. Indeed, this is how we reward the good doers. This was truly a revealing test. We have sacrificed or we have substituted his son with a great sacrifice. This is why we are here today. And blessed Ibrahim with honorable mention among later generations. Salamu ala Ibrahim. Peace be upon Ibrahim. This is what Allah is saying about this man. Kathalika najzil muhsinin. Again, Allah repeats, this is how we reward the good doers. Innahu min abadin al mu'minin. He was truly of our faithful servants. Wabasha nahu bi ishaqa nabiya manasalihin. We gave him good news of Ishaq, another son, a prophet and another righteous man. Allah rewarded him with another son from his first wife who was supposedly barren. Allah healed her and blessed him with another child for this willingness, because of his faith, this perfect Iman, perfect Iman, this perfect submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This entire story is about not having human sacrifices. During that time, people were sacrificing human beings. And Allah does not want human sacrifice. He wants your total submission to him. And that submission does not include the trust of Hajar in the plan of Allah and the fortitude of Ibrahim to carry out the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that, brothers and sisters, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Nabana afita afita afina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina adaba no. Our Lord give us good in this world and in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the hell. Someone. Take beer. Take beer. Take beer. I don't know if the food is ready. Is the food out yet? <laughs> it should be ready. We uh, have some food already prepared, so food should be ready. <laughs>